Hey guys, this is part 3 of the Java game programming tutorial. Last time we finished up the game loop and that will serve as the foundation for the rest of our game. Now we can actually go into the game code. This video we will do create a player and allow the user to move him around using the keyboard. So let's get started. We're going to create a new file, copy null, player.java, and go ahead and open that up. We're going to import java.ot for the graphics, and let's start making this class. We need some fields, so the player needs an x, y, and r, which stands for radius. I'm not going to be using any sprites. I want to keep this as simple as possible so the player is only going to be a circle. We also need a dx, a dy. Um, what else? Speed. And some more game related stuff, maybe lives. Ooh. I want to make all of these private. I mean, you don't have to, but I just make a habit of making all class fields private. So we're gonna need a couple more things. We need four booleans. Left, right, up, and down. And that's gonna tell us uh, that the player is moving in whatever direction. So let's start out with the constructor now. Public player. Alright, let's set the X. Let me just move this up. Set the X to game panel dot width. And this is why I wanted to make the width and height public static so that other classes like the player can use them. Radius, I set that to 5, dx is 0, dy is 0, speed is 5, lives is 3, I guess. 3 is a good starting point. We're done with the constructor. So now um, the rest of it is going to be a function. This, every class it will make from now on will have two things in common. We're going to have an update function and a draw function which will give it a graphics object. So let's go ahead with update. This should be relatively simple. If left, then obviously we're going left, so dx is going to be minus speed. If right, dx is speed. And if up, dy is minus speed. And down, dy is speed. We're going to set x plus equals dx and y plus equals dy here. Um, and we also need to check the bounds. If x is less than r, x is equal to r. If y is less than r, y is equal to r. And same thing for the right and bottom borders of the screen. If x is greater than game panel dot width minus r, x is equal to game panel width minus r. And same thing with y, except height, game panel height minus r. And down here we're just going to reset the dx and dy to zero. Now we are going to draw the player here. We're going to actually go back up to the top here and create two colors. Color 1 and color 2. And color 1 is going to be our regular color, which we'll just make white, and color 2 is going to be the color when we're hit, which will be red. So G dot set color, color one, G dot fill oval, X minus R, Y minus R, two times R, two times R. This makes our X and Y coordinates at the center of the player. Then we're going to set stroke, 
new basic stroke 3. This makes our lines and such 3 pixels wide. G dot fill oval. Uh, and now we're going to set the color to color 1 dot darker. So this is going to be like a grayish color. I'm going to draw an oval. We're going to draw the border just to make it look nice. Same exact arguments. And that's pretty much it. I want to reset the stroke back to 1 after this just so we don't forget. Okay, and that's pretty much it for a player. If we go back to game panel, and now we can actually do stuff with them. Create the player up here in the fields, and before the game loop, we're gonna go ahead and create that new player. Player equals new player. And this is what the game update and game render are for. It's gonna update everything that we have on right now and game render is going to draw everything that we have so go ahead and put player.update and player.draw in those respective functions now we need to get keyboard input um, so go back up to add notify we're going to add key listener we're going to pass it our game panel this just like with the thread so that means we need to implement some more. Implement key listener. That means we need to override three functions. I'm going to go all the way to the bottom. Public void key typed key event key. Public void key relief uh, pressed key event key and public void key released key event key key type isn't really important key press and key released are what we're going to use um, but first let's go back to player we need to create some setters for our booleans here so let's go ahead and do that public void set left boolean b we're going to do left is equal to b and we're going to do that for all four directions so right up and down and this will be down up and right so back to our game panel we're going to get the key code which is um, key.get key code symbol and if key code is equal to key event dot vk left that means we pressed the left button and we're gonna do player dot set left true we're gonna do that for all four directions so vk right up and down. We also need to change player.set right, player.set up, and down. Now go ahead and copy all of that and we're going to put it into key released as well. Okay, so here when we release the key instead of true, we're going to make everything false. That should be it. Um, don't forget all the way at the top to import java.ot.event since we're using a key listener now. Let's go ahead and compile this. Java C star.java. Ooh, I spelled key event wrong. It's supposed to be a capital K. Where did I miss it? Here capital K capital E so let's compile that and run it and there's our player which we can move around with the arrow keys ooh I can't really see them um, let's go ahead and change the background color to uh, something else new color RGB so maybe no red 
uh, a little bit of green and maximum blue. So let's compile and run that. Cool. And there's our player. And that's pretty much it for this video. I'll see you in the next one.